You want to be an architect? Maybe a truck driver? Maybe a realtor? Something in the medical field? Huh. Listen to Career Paths and Audits on that. Thursday. During the show, oh, there on you purpose, go. and we did several of those, but we haven't. We're in, we don't have a video editor. We're not smart enough, and so one of these. Do we have other ideas that? I was going to say one of these. We should put a false wall up and just have the wall fall back one time. <laughs> oh, we have it. Oh, we have stuff. The co-host co-host thing, preconceived is uh, Infonet is who is in charge of this. We're Infonet, okay. but um, it's him and I and. He's hosting, but not you're co-hosting, Ryan. He's no, not no, hosting. I'm hosting. That's what they told me. But I'm host. You that you'd be co-host. That's our thing. That's where we're gonna start messing with each other and being jerks. Oh, together. trying to figure out. Okay, I get it now. I see. It, we're playing co-hosts because we're, we're both hosts. We have other ideas. We're gonna do uh, where he's gonna have uh, like a host, Ryan King, and I'll have to spot on co like a little. Oh, like a little Velcro on co. Yeah, I see yeah, what I'm you're like, doing yeah. there. Okay, just, a little, up with just being yeah. stupid and silly. Absolutely. Because Ryan's stupid and silly. More stupid than silly. Yeah. And he actually had to be the shock warrior for a Toys for Tots benefit show. That you we had did. Seven, huh? Yeah. That that's, had, that's a lot of weight on your shoulders. It I was. tell you that uh, reputation <laughs> of a shock warrior extends far. Very oh. far. And let me tell you, you should definitely know who that man is. <laughs> <laughs> like, ain't making that mistake again. I don't, he, he, on the show, we don't even, I, yeah, I don't, I, yeah. Oh, good. This is not, we, yeah, no, okay, that's yeah. not me. That's, I don't know. I don't know who that is, but that man's reputation goes far. It's not always good, but, you know, I've heard No, it's show. loud. <laughs> <laughs> He's loud, I hear. Can be. Allegedly. Uh, you know, if he, yeah. Yeah, the band was, uh, we had a couple bands that night, and uh, it was 2000, two, between 2009 and 10, where they're going from the AF2 to the AFL, and uh, Rob Keefe, the new head coach, was there, and blah, 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 and I asked Ryan to be Shock Warrior, because he's, yeah, sub him, because I had to be the guy behind the drums, to oh. rock and roll. Okay. So I had to be in two places, one. Actually, well, you know what that says. Now we know your priorities clearly. It's the drums first, right? Oh, I I've been done it all my life. Yeah, I started playing uh, on the road. My first road band I was 19 years old. Oh, for right 10, on. 15 years out of high school, that's all I did for a living. Crushing it. I there's yeah there's I, was I got history. some drums back there. Yeah, yeah there's that's one set. Oh, yeah. just just one, one set. Everywhere. Oh, that's right. The camera's going. Yeah. No, Ryan, you're, I hate you. Action. <laughs> that's unedited. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. I loved. Oh, I shared stuff with. Uh, he hasn't shared with you. I'll have to be able to do that. Some stuff on YouTube. There's a video with uh, you as Shock Warrior, by the way. I uh, some uh, from the show backstage somewhere. Oh, okay. I saw it in the last month or two. I went. Wait a minute. That's not. Did you tell him how famous you are? That how much your one of your CDs sold for? Uh, I don't think my first band, French Kiss, was a three-song EP that we were told to do because we had two labels looking at us back in the day. Uh, la in the last year, online, uh, somewhere, somehow, somebody bought it, still seal or shrink wrapped, hundred thirty five dollars. Oh shoot! It's like what the mother? Yeah. Who the hell? I, I still don't understand. Yeah. Because uh, you can all this. It's on YouTube. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> it makes right. you buy things off. Of them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You buy CDs. Who has a CD player still? <laughs> yeah, cool. it just blew me away. It's like a guy was out of California or something. So I yeah. don't. Yeah. Kind of Watch him turn around and sell it for 138. I <laughs> would find some copies if I had. Yeah, I don't have. I'm sure I have a shrink wrapper if you find some. You know, guy. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Career Paths by Infonet. I'm your host Victor Boutreau. With us today, you know, Mac. Yes. I don't even know your last name. I think Mac Kirk. And so well, I'm that's just, quick, quick and easy. Yeah, Captain Kirk. You know, it's a pretty uh, easy uh, one to I, remember. I, um, but yeah, I'm the uh, senior account executive for the Spokane Shock. And so, senior account executive, that sounds so impressive. So basically, I field, when I can't field an issue, I kick it to Scott. Oh, so he's like, okay. Yeah, I'm just like a little buffer zone in between. That's that's basically he it. I try, to take, enough to take I try to take some tasks off his plate because, you know, as the VP of operations and ticket sales, he's got a lot to do. But at the same time, as a senior account executive, I try to take some of those some of those tasks off his hands, huh. some of the more mundane stuff, so he can kind of focus on bigger huh. picture so stuff. So what's mundane 
for him that you would take he doesn't you know he doesn't need to call all our season ticket holders and provide them with updates he needs to figure right. out the proper layouts the proper operations so how do you that's know kind of where i step in do you know the proper operations since there hasn't been a game yet no so <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're all flying by our bootstraps, more or less, for this one, but at the same time, um, I, I would have to think it's like any other sport eating event I worked, you know. It, you have been in the field for a while, haven't you? Correct, about eight years. It's, I remember something, there's that baseball team from the coast, maybe Mariners, or and then that football team that, didn't you? I did a little bit for uh, uh, the that, West Side I've sport team. the Seahawks or something? The Seahawks, yeah, them. they're they kind of dabble in the NFL a little bit. They're <clears throat> they're okay, yeah, more or less. They weren't okay when they started. Trust me. I whew, I remember those years. Oh, I do know, too. As a child, just <laughs> always told believe, believe, believe. You know, and what was it? You know, thirty years later, after that, you know, we finally made it. Oh, there we go. There That's we what go. I started watching, in, but he was left-handed. Okay, there you right. go, some of the old-school throwback jerseys. Uh, I, I like them. Yeah, well, that's how old that is. Yeah. Hopefully, they. I rumor they might try to do throwbacks. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised, you know. Um, I was fortunate enough to do... Uh, have you been to a Seattle Seahawks Pro Shop? I have. As okay. I, yes, and I work at a sports store in Spokane once in a while, but... Okay. Authentic. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that was I got my introduction into sports through retail, believe it or not, which is a very. Where'd you work? What'd you do? So, uh, quick recap. So I am one of those people that did end up going to college. So oh, I you did, son of a. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So I got you? that forty thousand dollar piece of paper that says you know I can <laughs> sit through class for four years straight, um, and you know I. In, in the field, I've met people who've done both paths, you know, and a lot of them, at a, at a certain point, you kind of all cross together regardless right. of what. You stick in it. I'll actually never forget, I was, uh, when I was working at the Seahawks, I was walking with my uh, boss at the time, and he looks at me and he goes, did you go to college? And that's where I stepped back for a second, I was like, wow. He didn't even look to see if I went to college, like, why that's did your boss, I go huh? to college for mm -hmm. a second, you know? Um, but I will admit, you know, going to college did help me kind of to kind of have a better grasp of solving situations that pop up. Because, you know, I, in sports, nothing's very cookie cutter. What works one day will never work the same, you know. And so I think being able to kind of learn how to research a problem, how to think, you know, a little more critically in the aspect of it. And, you know, that stuff all comes with time, you know, working in a job or working in a field. Um, and I think that's kind of what you know, I grasped out of the college experience for me. And then uh, after college, uh, I went and did concessions and operations for the Spokane Indians. So back at, where'd you go yep. to college at? Uh, Concordia University in Irvine. Okay. California. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so yeah, after that, I, I graduated with a degree in sports management and then a minor in psychology. <laughs> right. Um, but they come hand in hand. Cause yes, well. If, like, leapfrogging, questions um That's you know fine. i always wanted to be a sports agent i always thought hmm. that was awesome and was that a toby mcguire thing <laughs> show me the I money baby i never right? saw that movie though okay but i've heard okay. of it okay. so, you know. um so yeah <laughs> when i was in college i was fortunate enough to intern with a couple sports agents down in california oh. um and they told me part of being a sports agent is you kind of got to babysit and so they recommended psychology mm -hmm. um just to kind of better understand mm -hmm. what's going on you know give or take that with a grain of salt mm -hmm. But yeah, so I graduated with that and then uh, jumped right into a minor league team, Spokane Indians, and did concessions and operations there. And What year was that? Do you remember? Ish? Uh, Ish. Yeah, 2011. Ish, okay. 11, 12. Fantastic. Yeah, and so um, it was an eye-opening experience, honestly, coming straight out of college, working a single-A uh, minor league team where, you know, you have eight-game homestands. Right. Eight yeah. days of 16 hour days yeah you're like whoa and but uh that kind of showed me that's what sports is um uh, everybody does ask what you do in the off season but <laughs> when you're in the off season you maybe have one week where yeah, it's like you can breathe you're not really thinking too much about the next season and then that week ends and you're right back mm -hmm. in it you got to start grinding again um and then yeah after the indians i uh all through uh, college, I sold shoes at Nordstrom. That's where I got my sales experience, right? Oh, there you go. He's selling shoes. Yeah. Um, and so the Seahawks needed a store manager position for their pro shop. 
And I was like, hey. In the, in the stadium or? Uh, they were the going to do a seasonal one at the mall in the valley. I don't know if you ever remember that one popping up. Um, here in Spokane? Yeah, here in Spokane. Mm-hmm, I do. Yeah, so that was my store. <laughs> yeah, that was my store. Um, Just sports? You were aware I was right below it. That's yeah. where I do once in a while still. Okay, okay. So <laughs> it to me, it was a super unique avenue to get into mm-hmm. professional sports because. Yeah, definitely. One, you know, retail's pretty niche. You you have niche experience if you're able to sell like UPTs, add things onto an or like yeah. a retail oh, transaction. Yeah. You know yeah, how yeah. it is. Uh, I've um, done a few of those. Yeah, so I swung for the fences and I got that position. Um, and I was super fortunate that I did. Uh, my team there was amazing. They were a great group of kids, you know, fresh out of college <laughs> or, you know, in high school and right, stuff. Right. Um, but they killed it. And, you know, the Seahawk management took notice of that. That wasn't there a long time, though, the store No, itself. it was a pop-up. So I looked at it as I had a five-month opportunity to, to interview with the Seahawks. Mm-hmm. And if I did well enough, they would find something for me over there, right? Fingers crossed. Okay, so that's what happened? That's what happened, yeah. So uh, my store did really well for the location. Uh, they closed it down for the season. They said, hey, Mac, we want to do something new at the stadium would you want to be a part of it and <laughs> i was like well let me think about it yeah i was like sold like let me let me come do do that and so i moved from spokane over to seattle and what they wanted me to do was uh century link has a bunch of retail locations in there century link quest isn't it now I it's anyway. yeah, uh, well, <laughs> lumen field uh, lumen that's uh, right okay yeah. anyway. so <laughs> lumen field has a bunch of uh retail locations uh in it and they wanted the Seahawks are one of six NFL teams that actually run their own uh, retail divisions. Oh, so uh, they used to have volunteers in the stands running those, but they wanted someone to come in, build a team out, and hire the staff to run them. And so wow. that's yeah, that was that my, was you. That was my unique opportunity, wow. and um, it was super super fun. But you know, working in sports, I never watched one Seahawks game unless it was an away game. Yeah, you'd be um, kind of busy, wouldn't you? Super busy. I, I'll never forget sitting in my office and you'll hear the fireworks go off, right? Right, right. And that's when you know to look for a TV because there's a 30 second or 10 second delay. So mm. you know we scored, but you want to see how we okay. scored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but it's also, um, you know, there's things in sports, the long hours, things like that, but also. How many people get to pick up the Lombardi Trophy? How many people get to pick up the MLS Cup? You know, never show off. Yeah, it's well, it's experience like that that you know it's the give and take. Would Mm -hmm. I love to be a fan and come pay and watch four quarters of the football game? Sometimes, sometimes. Or do I want to grind out these sixty-hour weeks? And maybe get a hold of trophy at the yeah, end of the season. Yeah. You know, Did that, you get to hold a belt too? Uh, I got a hold of belt like one time too. Yeah, I, I yeah, I used to have a connection. I know a guy, <laughs> um, big wrestler dude, and he's got all sorts of belts. And nice. he, got, he let me nice. put one on, and I'll never forget. They weigh a lot heavier than you think, which you know is pretty crazy. Wow. Um, so yeah, and then you know, truthfully, um, in sports, you know, you you gotta. You sometimes got to jump ship to get the experience you want to go to a, to another level. Right? So how long were you doing the for Seahawks? Uh, three three and a half years. Wow. Okay. So, so you built it and maintained it and built it, maintained it, and it started running. Uh, it was pretty much running by itself. It was a well oiled machine, is like I how I like to phrase it. Um, even though you ran it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm even sorry. right. Well. Funny story now is, you know, my <laughs> position doesn't even exist anymore. That's how well ran it is, you know. So, um, but uh, yeah, and so I truthfully, I kind of saw my ceiling in the retail a- aspect of sports because six teams own their own retail, and you know, you can go to operations manager and then maybe a director of retail. Um, so I told myself I need to step back and get sales experience because. You know, teams look for revenue generating people first. If you can bring money in for the team, they'll definitely look for you first. Um, So, you you know, like that's retail, that's ticket sales, you know, that's sponsorship sales, those kind of positions. And so I didn't have really any true business to business sales experience. Mm -hmm. I still choose a Nordstrom and then I went into management experience, right? Yeah. Um, And so stepping back, I wanted sales experience because I wanted to get some sales experience and jump back into a ticketing position because through ticketing you're exposed to a lot more of the organization mm-hmm. because you need to get ticketing for your sponsors you need to mm-hmm. get ticketing for special guests you know all that stuff marketing needs ticket, tickets to give away so ticketing is kind of the t- 
to me, the backbone of any organization because without the tickets, you can't generate the revenue to support the other s staff, so on and so forth. Um, and so after the Seahawks, I stepped back and worked uh, three years in business to business sales, which was um, truthfully, it was it was hard work getting your territory. But once you build out a territory, it becomes where'd very. You, where'd you go? Or would you? Um, you don't have to be specific. Anymore. Yeah, no, I sold commodities more or less, consumables okay. like beer, liquor, stuff like that. Okay. And so um, you build out a territory, and you know you learn your building account relationships because you were out of the west side back then when you jumped uh, I actually or... built it over here on the east side okay and so yeah I took a territory of about uh, eight accounts and grew mm -hmm. to 37 or so yeah, that's bad yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's fun you're not married are you no huh. go ahead yeah <laughs> so um, yeah it was it was great experience to learn how to build these and cultivate these relationships and go ahead I was uh, finish I uh, have a thought, yeah, question for you um, just because you know, when whether it be ticket sales or whether it be, you know, consumables, you're looking to build a relationship with a, a buyer or mm -hmm. a customer because mm -hmm. it's not a one and done. I'm not selling you a copier that you're going to use for 15 mm -hmm. years. I'm selling you Hopefully. a memory that you want to have that memory nine times we a year. We had Scott on. He was talking about memories. That makes it. I it's mean, you're using it for the sales and part of your motivation. And he was referencing it, be able to look back and what he can see that he did so kind of the along the same lines along the same lines for sure because you know you can look at you know a, a twitter feed or you know facebook and someone says oh i love that game or you know everybody remembers where they were when marshawn lynch did the beast quake you know mm -hmm. if you're a seattle fan like those are the memories of sports that is oh i just love to be a part of because if you know, you get to see a family having a good time, or you know, you see a couple on a date or something like, mm -hmm. just enjoying it. You know, you you and a lot of other people, honestly, had a hand putting that experience together. Oh yeah, together. it's not just one person. And truthfully, I, the fans, I don't think really understand how many moving parts it is to make a game day a game day. Yeah, well, why would they? Exactly. It's not like there's a, a, there's documents docs out there that people can watch or look at all this stuff that goes on. And that's a testament to the people in the front office and behind the scenes because if you don't realize like oh my gosh that fell off or that's not working you don't it, you don't realize it because you know you don't have those errors and mm -hmm. i think that's you know where we really get excited because if we could have our opening day go like if i didn't have to change someone's seats on the 19th you're referring to the shock for the shock i'm sorry to jump back yeah, yeah so okay. like so our first game on the shock is june 19th and it would be crazy if I didn't have to switch someone's seats, you know? Mm -hmm. But to me, if I never switch someone's seats, I executed a perfect game day. So that's the goal. That's the strive. How can I be so well prepared for this upcoming game day? If you didn't have to move anybody seat wise, you didn't do anything. Okay, sorry. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I, I know you're having to do a lot because of everything that's going absolutely. on. Absolutely. And, you know, there's a saying uh, separations in the preparation. Mm -hmm. You separate yourself from your opponent on the field or you know, another business in the preparation before the event because the minute that gate opens, you stop being proactive and you become reactive to the situation. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, people are caught on their lorries. They have to think on their feet. And sometimes people can't think on their feet very well, you know, and so that's where preparation, preparate, you know. But doing that for a while, you kind of get, I reference me doing music and there's things that'll change, but fortunately I can, go adjust accordingly. I mean, it's not exactly the same thing, but mm -hmm. see if that happened, oh, okay. it, psychology where I had to adjust is like this. Yep. So you have an, kind of an idea, even if it's a little bit different, you have a clue somewhere to go, maybe? Ex yeah, you absolutely. And, you know, uh, I think the best thing is, you know, you got to look up to people, you know, that have the bigger experience than you. Because would you go to Scott ask him anything, or is he? Oh my gosh, all the time, all the time. Because I don't get me wrong, I'm gonna try to think through this first. Sure. Well, hopefully. But if I have that second guess in my stomach, I'm someone who likes to measure twice, cut once. Yeah. So, and you know, my boss Scott, he's a great guy. Where. He's very open to like te teachable you, moments is what we call them. I, uh, he seems that way. Yeah, and so if I'm not, and this is my first bout in ticketing, you know, I came from retail right, management, right? right? And right. so um, I understand what goes on in a game day, and I think that's what prepares me for this. Mm -hmm. But it's, there's also, you know, I asked him a great question of, you know, why do rows go from H to J? 
No, why no I? Because an I can be mistaken for a one on a ticket, and you don't want people to have to deal with that. I, I never knew like, that. What? I never yes. knew that. And that's that's the ticketing experience you get over years. Makes I didn't sense. open up a college textbook and someone go, hey. You didn't learn that in college? No, surprisingly. Son, you paid right? 40000 Exactly. And that's the kind of things with experience. But, you know, noticing how I was missing a rope, you know, caused me to ask a question. And yeah. Maybe now we are all, it's a teachable moment for all of us, right? I just learned some. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Makes so, sense. Um, things like it's that. I taught you that. Yeah. So, uh, I definitely go to my, uh, my boss Scott a lot with some Wise questions. Man. Very, Wise man. very. And, you know, with the amount of experience he has, chances are if I'm bringing up a question, he's dealt with it once he or would, twice yeah. in his lifetime. Yeah, I had an idea. So, he'll be like, I remember this one time. And then, you know. Have you guys uh, thought, because of the 19th and everything that's gone on, looked at each other and go, oh, God, and just... Had to ponder some, and I don't know. Something come has came up in the last several weeks when we never thought of that or had to deal with that one before. Uh, you know, I, I think what we've never had to deal with before is the uncertainty mm -hmm. of our layout. You know, I think. Okay. I think that's who can be. That's just the biggest question mark that us in ticketing hate because we hate question marks. You know, I want to know what my seating arrangement is. Well, the fans do too. Yeah, exactly. makes it easy. Makes yeah. it easy for. But you know, I want to get more butts in the seats, right? So, what? Yeah, that's crazy. More people. Um, and if you know, if I don't know what my exact layout is, I don't want to sell things I don't have. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, For me, yes, because, yeah. So those are kind of the thing, you know, I don't want to control for Zambus, but those are the things where, you know, we kind of go, oh, boy. Yeah, that would okay, make sense. But Scott has enough experience where we have contingency A, B, and C, ready there to rock go. and roll, right? Whatever whatever goes on the 19th, we're ready for it. So separation is There's separation. like three, four different plan floor plans. Too many plans to count right now. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. But you're being prepared to at least have an idea Absolutely. of where to go and it's, with it. It's putting in this work now because, you know, imagine we don't want to be that only team in Spokane who, you know, roll, botches their pandemic rollout for the season. You know, we're the best in town. That's what we like to think. Well, the Shock has a reputation for doing what they do. Doing what we do. I'm not saying bad. I, yeah. I, I, we're the loudest. Uh, and uh, the championships. And championships, that's few, true. I heard. A couple dubs, yeah. <laughs> Real fast, we jumped. Um, background and it's fine yeah. no we're good I, I enjoying i like variety instead of going okay is he gonna shut up yet okay yeah. no you're not married no kids no M mom dad uh, your dad is not with us anymore or is it i can't remember i talked to you the other night yeah no my uh yeah my dad uh, passed away when i was in college in my junior year unfortunately he had cancer and your mom's on the south hill my mom lives yeah. in the south hill yeah and uh, what's your mom's name kim Hey, Kim. Kim, and she follows uh, the shock. She knows she keeps me updated on shock news. I'll open my email up, and Thanks, boom, Kim. we got some stuff on the shock. She sent me a picture. I guess I was on the Facebook page or the, the fan page at oh. one of the watch parties. Mm -hmm. And she's like, look at you at the table. And I was like, oh, jeez. Yeah. Mom feed you? Oh, yes. Yes, I, I always go over for Sunday dinner. Um, we like to do that. Um, and then just catch her up on life. And, you know, you got to cherish cherish your family especially mm, yeah. as you know i'm getting older and she she looks the same age you know she's a great gal but um <laughs> yeah you cherish the moments will together. she be at the first game or 19th do you know? uh if i can find her seat okay. season ticket holders get priority sorry mom huh. Huh. no i just yeah. I, she'll I'll be there at a game, game eventually oh no. she's definitely going to come to okay. a game nice yeah maybe i'll go to a game and check it out maybe i'll meet her uh, yeah you should you'd we'll like see. it well, I've been to a couple in the past, and they, you know, they're fun. Yeah, I hear you were big with the Empire, right? You know, I went to a few games okay. there, too. Um, <laughs> Aren't you more of a Wolfpack guy, though? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I went to a couple of those games. Let's see. Um, anybody inspire you? See, we jumped through steps, things you did further. Yeah, you were yeah, through I that. Just went on this. No, you're good. I, I don't have to ask, <laughs> ask questions. <laughs> you were good. Um, obstacles to get from, no, you already answered that one. Worst part, best part of school, doing college, you spent $40,000, you didn't the learn. Worst part, yes. You didn't learn well, uh, I and one. Student loans. Um, truthfully, though, I think I would still go to college again if I had to. Party yeah. lied, did you? Okay, good for you. Well, the worst part was not knowing that there's no eyes in the road. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. 
you but would like, the amount of things after all that yeah <laughs> after all of that you didn't even tell me how a ticketing row works I, wow yeah I just amazed you'd think that it's just kind of uh, you'd think it would be like I don't know. sports 101 let's go to our arena at the college and I've walk not, up yeah. the ticketing I, gotta, I mean I've talked to Scott and asked him if there's any other things that come up off the top I would have never that I number one like, what's your task right now do you know what your task and uh, hours are going to be for game day in a couple weeks? You know, I would assume it's like any other game day, another 10, 14 hour day, depending on uh, what's got to be done because... Everything's got to be first game and hasn't been going and blah, blah, blah. Well, it's, Shock was gone it's for like five years. Yeah, it's like taking a year and a half vacation and then being like, okay, let's wake go. up and go to work. Yeah, like, wait a minute. You yeah, know, but I'm, you paid 40000 Okay. Yeah, right. Um, but I, I picture my day is going to be mostly spent in the ticketing uh, front ticketing window, assisting uh, the stadium staff and making sure our season ticket holders, if they have any questions or a seat doesn't work for them, getting adjusted properly and making sure they can just Make enjoy the game. Help. Happy. That that's the end goal. Is you know we want our fans to enjoy the experience and come back. And so if we have to put in some extra work up front to make that happen, we're all about it. Any any. Any uh, giveaways or anything like that do you know of? I had been to a game. I, let's see. Uh, do I don't have anything. Like promotional oh, giveaways? Wait. I have a. I have a. You see that guy? That oh, little? yeah, yeah. So you're talking promotional yeah, giveaways? Yeah, promotional. Thank you. I'm pretty sure we're giving away a good experience. Well, uh, I'm Zing. excited to just watch yeah. the team actually play. There's Spokane Shock playing in the arena. Me too. Me too. It's been a few years. But no promotions that I know of. At okay. No worries. I, thanks. Don't hold me to that. You never know. It might happen last minute, though. How many sponsors you guys have roughly these days? Because I know the COVID thing, there's certain blah. Uh, you have Ruby. You have Finley. I would, if you want me to guess me a number. Yeah, just, you don't have to be specific, but 10, 20, 100. I'm between the 10 to 20. Okay. It, you know, different. I know some of them had ones get different people or business were uh, skeptical because of past situations, and you got to rebuild, and. Just saying. Yeah. I know a guy. You know a lot of guys, huh? I know a lot of people. Yeah. I, it's not always a good thing. Can't go anywhere people talk about Ryan. So, I don't... Ryan, go ahead. You can host now. Go ahead. You want to host my man? I thought I was. Yeah. The whole time. Just going off the rail. I just... Go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> so, any more your job now, <laughs> what's the... What's the worst part about it? And what's the best part? Oh man. Ooh. Oh, I guess I'll start with the best part. I think uh, the best part is truthfully the experience. Um, as someone who's worked in sports, I was excited for the industry to come back because there is no playbook for what's going on right now. Yeah. And so I'm a, for the rest of my life I get to look back and be like, let me tell you about the time we tried to kickstart a season right after a pandemic. Um, I think this is experience that people will look for in the future uh, because, you know, now we know you never really know what's going to go on year to year. Oh, yeah. A lot can change in a year, and the more experience you have in unique situations, you know, if they ever come up again, you're, you have an idea. Maybe you have a you have a good ten, tenuous grasp of what might happen, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that um, I guess you know what I don't like. Right now, I guess the super extended hours, you know, we got a lot to d take care of after a year and a half off. Yeah, but you just, you know, you paid $40,000. <laughs> I got to pay off that 40000 So you got to work a lot of extra. <laughs> exactly. But exactly. they still didn't teach you I and what, uh, I'm sorry. Don't well, me. hey, apparently, you know, I went to college. You guys didn't go to college. We all didn't know that. So Ooh, that's, no, that's, a, God, that's a wisdom I've never, thing that someone, you know. I just went to games and bought tickets. They never said, hey, you can't have I or never asked it. Did, did you even notice, though? It's so smooth about it. And they, there's also one more row missing that they take out, right? If I'm not mistaken, don't show them. Make them realize the next time hmm. they go. Figure, right. out what, figure out what's missing in the next countdown. Uh, Look at you. I never you see the, the, the rows A, B, C, you know, say the ABCs. I never and paid out which one's attention. Missing. I had better things to do. But now you're going to be curious. I, I probably not. It. No, mm -hmm. I don't. I already know. So why do I have to? So. <laughs> don't want to make make sense. Zero. Yeah, right. Exactly. Things you yeah. Can easily that one really makes sense. I have kind of got to sit and think like, oh, 
when was the first person I was just like, cut eye out, we don't want it anymore? Like, how many customers or fans yeah. went back and was like, where's one? And they're like, it's an eye. Where's one one? Yeah, where's one one? one, one. one. What, what, what? No, your eye one. Mm, that's a one. Yeah, so mm. you always got to think about that first person who blew it for everybody because they couldn't read an eye. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm looking, Back in the 80s yeah. concerts, it was me. I'm looking for Where's zero one? one. Zero Where's one. one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they moved me. Take zero. <laughs> yeah, ticketing <laughs> puns. We got a bunch of them. <laughs> Go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> so income. You do well. You don't need specifics, but... Yeah, you know. no. Um, you know, Comfortable. obviously, I, I think everybody clearly, you know... Did you get commission or did, when you did the Seahawks thing? Or no, was no. In man, I, yeah, I was in a management role, so okay. I didn't get any uh, any sales commission or anything on that. But I uh, was treated really well. The health insurance in the NFL is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I can't can't complain on that. Um, you get health care and stuff now? Uh, yeah, all that jazz. Uh, it's with most most teams, you know. It's something you really, I at least for me, and that's what I look for in most teams. Um, uh, most jobs, I don't. Right, do you have health care right now? Yeah. Through Kerry. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> health insurance is health insurance, you know. Um, I might not tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You never know when she might just quit. She <laughs> might just quit. <laughs> and, and I'm out. need that health insurance back. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I think pay is good. It's, you know, I think, especially in revenue generating one, it's really dependent on experience and stuff. And, you know, I personally like these positions because you can make your own money with commissions. Plus, you're stuff. by mom and yeah, and by mom, I don't have to travel as much. And so, and honestly, growing, I grew up in Spokane, and coming back, I love seeing how it's just progressed. And yeah. I seriously enjoy this town. I can't can't not live here, I guess. I, I've so come to that realization. We've been here all our lives. Yeah. yeah I moved away a couple times. Keep coming back. Keep coming back, <laughs> right? And That's you right. know, at this point, I think I'm old enough, I realize, like, okay, I just need to set up some roots, roots yeah. here in town. You know, it's not always about... Would I love to go back to like the NFL? I think that'd be fantastic. But you, it's you've Seattle. experienced it. Yeah, it's you've seen, a lot yeah. of traffic. A lot of stuff. The rent's expensive. Um, and the community here in Spokane is something I just really thoroughly enjoy. So you went to a watch party the other night? Correct. It was first interaction with fans, at least the fans that were there? Uh, no, or I think uh, we had the Ruby, uh, this would be our third watch party, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and you know, I, I, I'd gone to a couple, I just hadn't talked to you before. Yeah, I tend to blend in. Yeah, yeah I like to just kind of lurk. Who are you again? Uh, I'm Scott. I'm the vice president of tickets. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I see you. I don't know why. I don't want to come off as weird. <laughs> I <laughs> had I, I had a friend's you. wife see me at a game. I was dressed like this, and I walked by, and she goes to her, her husband at the time, who the hell does he think he is? Yeah. And she's going, he's going, what? I worked with this guy, and I was just stressed, and uh, apparently I walked with a, I don't know, I'm not insecure. I'm not. I'm, you walked with too much confidence. She yeah, apparently, know. she thought it was arrogance, and you got to turn that. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Well, you always got to walk with a purpose. That's what my first grade teacher told me. I'm just. I've done what I've done. I've done stuff other people have never done. Yeah. I've had fun doing it. Preach. Over and over <laughs> and over again. What did you want to be when you were a kid? You want to be a um, a football player, um, a pro wrestler? I wanted to be a professional skateboarder. Really? Yeah. We had somebody else said, who'd you follow? Who's your idol? Oh, boy. Uh, Rodney Mullen was probably the first one. But then, you know, I really got in, like, the first, like, I watched the 411 videos, Thrasher, all that jazz. Uh, but then the, the girl video where they uh, painted the skateboard green and I put it on it. the green screen. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, it, that one just got me hooked. And, you know, I really like... I like the individual sports because the only way you get better at skating is if you put the time in and you practice and you can just like mm-hmm. you know being a musician you know you're not you can't like go to school and learn it it's something you kind of feel or yeah, you hopefully. teach yourself mm-hmm. yeah and so that's i just remember you know i think of all the times i spent hours throwing myself down 10 stairs because i was like i'll get it next time you know you got hematomas on each side of your hip your knees are all bruised but you're like i swear i'll get it you land it one time it's the best high i've ever had you know like do you still have a skateboard do i still have a skateboard yeah. oh yeah all i right. still skate it probably once or twice yeah you know, a week well, i mean that's not including when i walk to my car in the morning in the garage i'll jump on my skateboard and do like a quick like pivots around 
just start your day off. Yeah, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's what it is. <laughs> so, how many skateboards do you have still? I just have my regular uh, eight and a half regular shred stick, you know, just a regular deck, and then I have a mini longboard that I like to of course. sometimes ride around. Yeah, I've I've never I no I I break a leg. No, I mean I've definitely broken a lot of bones for huh, sure. Being a drummer, you don't want to do that. Yeah, that's true. I didn't go skiing. We used to play uh, Big Mountain. Years ago, did, free ski passes. Stick the drumstick. Uh, you, yeah, yeah, down, yeah, you know? no. I, when you're right, making now, yeah, whatever. I was making money at the time. So okay, fair enough. I went. I was <laughs> never making money skateboarding, but you, you know, know, I definitely spent money. You know. Oh, we all. Mm -hmm. I spent money in different ways. Yeah. Just women and. <laughs> Rock and roll lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's been fun. Good. I could share some stories. There's a Brian. You want to share a story? <laughs> Probably not. No. Now I have to change the. But the E on the Oh, thing. explicit. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to I anybody? The other day, because I didn't listen you to the whole thing. Piece of. Wasn't sure if someone swore. <laughs> and who at the office told you you could. Never mind. <laughs> One of the upper guys. Okay. Top dogs. Top dogs. Top dogs. Big dogs. It's not going well. It's not going to go well. So, are you excited for. Hopefully everything pans and the fans don't throw stuff at you and hey, come at you. I, even if they throw things at me, I'm so <laughs> excited. Um, like I said, I I knew what I was getting into. This has never been done before. That's true. How long have you been with the shock now? A month and a half. Okay. Ish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I knew what I was getting into, and I think at the end of the day, we really just want to get everybody in the building. We want them back in their seats, and if this is what we have to do in the front office to make it you happen, we'll, we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, some people might not be happy with what the outcome Right, is, you're doing the best you can do. Exactly. If anybody, and, any fans out there don't understand that, you know, you're... Every day, you know, when they hate the situation, not you. Yeah. That's but, what it is, so. Yeah, they take it out on you, though. But, yeah, and I'm fine with that. You yeah. know, if it makes their game day better, go for it. <laughs> It's not going to hurt you. No. You walk home and yeah, drive I'll home and hop home. on the skateboard from. Sk I'm going to, yeah, skate myself home down the hill. Just skate it off, right? <laughs> really, some of the, the endorphins after work is definitely helpful. Once again, endorphins for me, I'd crash and hurt myself. And True. Get well. me on stage, play play drums, play music. And I bet, you know, that feeling you got on stage was the same you have I no had idea. on the skateboard. It's you just, played sports? I did. So if you had uh, your team, was something was just clicking? Like for an inning or two, what is grooving? Yeah, yeah. We've had uh, there's even if there's nobody in the like five people, there's something, there's an error. There's just yeah. With the guys that I yeah. I feel it. I mean, it's I think it's something that everybody kind of gets attracted to. It's why people go to games, you know. Uh, yeah. Oh, hopefully. That yeah. concerts, all that stuff. Yeah. You know? Ryan, anything else for? No. Nope. Mac. Nothing. You took off. That was good. I Thank you. I tried. You, you, you know, I'm, I'm you, really good at just rambling about myself. I well, can do did it well. more often. Was mom, yeah. you, you brothers, sisters? I have an older sister. Yeah. You gonna warn her about this? What's her name? Megan. Sorry, Megan. Yeah. So she, she didn't even think of you. Oh my gosh, that's gonna get me in a lot of trouble. Is she in town here? <laughs> she is in town. Yeah. Thanks, Megan. He, will she be at the game? Uh, she's we, definitely getting. Yeah, her and my mom will go. I'm gonna get them into the game. They want to go to a shock game. You know, they always came to Indian games when I was at the Indians. Hmm. She. She had she picked her one Seahawk game a year when I was at the Seahawks, so it's mm. just her tradition, I guess, is mooching off her son who works in sports. So if you hooked up over, you can try to get like Blitz back. We in the past they had Blitz over here and like Blue Thunder over here. I'm just saying, that's maybe I don't know. Who Blitz. knows? I mean, I I'm honestly I I would love to reach out to one of my uh, counterparts over there and just see what they're doing with the season. Yeah, because. I mean, just take our arena and times it by six. 60,000 people sit there. Good luck with that yeah. season chart, right? That's yeah. not on me. <laughs> yeah, with, yeah you, you have an easy job compared to that, I would think. I have a really easy job compared to that, and that's where you got to think about things in perspective, right? Exactly. Right? Like, things might be rough now, but I am not calling 60,000 people and saying, <laughs> hey! You can't come. Yeah, I remember that one time your seats were here, not anymore. You're in row I now. <laughs> You're in row I. You'll find it right next to O. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. If you got any comments, questions that you want, we'll pass to Mac. Um, Ryan, nothing? Where's nothing. The card? You, nothing. Gonna, you can get us out. Um, here, you can here, do it. You're hosting. <laughs> I think I can read your writing. <laughs> Thanks for listening <laughs> or <and> watching. watching. <laughs> like and subscribe. Thank to you. Career paths.
please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Remember, it's your life. Make it happen. Make it happen. Make it happen. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank, thank you, Mac. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Go you. shock. Go shock. Is it? Is it?